Good afternoon. Across Canada, there have been over 7,400 cases of COVID-19. And the last report, I saw 89 deaths. In Prince Edward Island today, we have three new positive COVID-19 cases, and this brings our total to 21. All three cases are related to international travel, and all have been self-isolating since their return. One is a male in his 20s, and two females, one in her 30s and one in her 40s. Again, examples of how important self-isolating immediately after any travel outside the province is. I also want to take a moment to clarify some information that was reported by the Canadian press this morning. There have been no deaths in our province yet. All, our case, all these cases are at home and we continue to monitor and follow up our cases and contacts um, as we move forward. Close to 800 tests have been done and uh, we are, we, although some are pending, we have uh, a number of those back and we anticipate being able to increase our testing capacity here in Prince Edward Island. It's a reminder that anyone experiencing symptoms related to COVID-19, cough, shortness of breath, fever, fatigue, chills, should call 811 to be screened and if necessary, tested for COVID-19. And those admitted to a hospital with Ill influenza-like illness will also be tested. And in both situations, it's regardless of travel. And it's because although we've not seen any cases of community transmission here in PEI, across the country, there are more and more cases of community transmission and we're trying to identify cases as early as we can. I want to briefly mention um, a question that has come up about the, when someone has COVID-19, whether they should use ibuprofen um, and, uh, or acetaminophen and that guidance has changed uh, and both are appropriate to use for symptoms uh, for COVID-19. And it's, it's probably worth mentioning just because uh, we get questions about it. There's lots of research going, across the, going on across the country and across the world about treatment of COVID-19 and uh, certainly the vaccine research um, world as well. I wanted to follow up uh, yesterday in terms of enforcement. There was a uh, in, and, uh, police officer uh, or a uh, conservation officer who's helping us with enforcement um, issued a written warning and then this morning Summerside Police followed up and issued a ticket with a fine the first offense being $1,000. And this is the first to fine issued in Prince Edward Island for not complying with self-isolation. And as of last evening, 60 complaints have been received into our office and uh, have resulted in written and verbal warnings for many of those cases. We've seen uh, a lot of traffic certainly on our island roads and it's just a, a reminder to please stay home as much as possible and go out when it's essential or if you're an essential worker traveling to and from your place of employment. We've had a number of questions about disinfecting groceries. And for islanders who are not in self-isolation, uh, uh, one essential trip out of the house uh, is going to be going for groceries. And one member of the household should be designated to go grocery shopping, and this should be limited. So try not to shop every day. Uh, it's a good idea to bring along disinfecting wipes to clean your shopping cart, not just the handle, but any area that may have come in contact with other shoppers and try to choose items uh, that are wrapped and that can be easily wiped clean with a disinfectant wipe. And when it comes to fruit and vegetables, washing them with soap and water when you get home. Avoid touching your face while shopping and on your route home and wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer as soon as you get home. 
Another trip uh, out is for essentials is going for gas and touching a gas pump is similar to touching other surfaces that could be infected and it's important you avoid touching your face after touching a, a gas pump and afterwards important to wash your hands or use a hand sanitizer. We've been receiving many questions and concerns regarding individuals uh, traveling to Prince Edward Island to summer homes or cottages. And unless your primary residence is on Prince Edward Island, you should uh, consider delaying coming to your cottage in PI until at least the end of May or until the COVID situation changes. I want to clarify that there should be no faith-based gatherings in person in Prince Edward Island. And I, although uh, it's, it's difficult, um, we're getting reports of a number of teenagers who are driving around, um, many in, together in cars. Um, and this would not be considered essential and they should stay home as much as possible. I know this is a difficult time for everyone and I recognize that individuals are looking for ways to brighten spirits and connect and help each other and there have been so many great examples across the province of doing just this and doing it differently. And we have to balance some of those examples with key principles of staying at home as much as possible and practicing physical and social distancing. This is a time when I, I worry we may start to get tired of staying home and tired of being physically uh, distant with each other. Yet this is just when we need to continue. The best thing we can do right now to protect ourselves, protect our loved ones and to protect our whole island is to continue staying home and practicing physical distance. COVID-19 is affecting people all over the world and no one should feel they're immune to this, even if we live here in Prince Edward Island. Our lives have all changed and they've changed quickly. We have asked you to change our behaviors, our work, our lives in ways I worry will have long-term impacts. But I ask us to continue to change knowing that if we don't physically distance, self-isolate, more of us will get sick and more people will end up in hospital and our healthcare system will not be able to manage with the numbers of those who will be ill with COVID-19 and those who need care in hospital for, for non-COVID related reasons. So we all have an important role to play. Thank you. Je vais faire en français. Um, à travers le pays, il y a plus de 7400 cas de COVID-19. Et au dernier uh, uh, temps que j'ai regardé, il y a 89 morts. Il y a trois nouveaux cas positifs de COVID-19 ici à l'île du Prince-Édouard. Notre total est rendu à 21. Encore trois cas reliés au voyage et encore des exemples clairs de pourquoi c'est important de s'auto-isoler tout de suite à leur retour. Pour les tests de dépistage, si vous présentez des symptômes de COVID-19 comme la toux, des difficultés respiratoires, de la fièvre, appelez 811. Nous n'avons toujours pas de cas de propagation communautaire, mais nous en entendons parler à travers le pays et le monde. Donc, nous voulons faire attention à ça. Suite à un avertissement écrit par un agent de conservation, la police de Summerside a donné une contravention à une personne qui n'a pas respecté la consigne d'auto-isolement. Et c'est la première amende à Lille. Euh, Il y a de nombreuses questions concernant les individus qui viennent à l'île pour leur chalet. Et euh, si votre domicile principal est à l'île, vous devrez considérer de rester euh, hors de l'île, de venir pas à votre chalet jusqu'au moins le la fin du mois de mai. 
Je veux être plus clair que pour les rassemblements confessionnels ici à Lille en personne. Des rassemblements comme ça ne peuvent pas pratiquer la distance physique et ce n'est pas le temps maintenant. Je sais que c'est un temps difficile pour tout le monde. Pour ceux qui ne sont pas en isolement, aller à l'épicerie, c'est un déplacement essentiel, mais il faut faire attention. C'est une bonne idée d'apporter pour l'instant avec euh, vous des lingettes désaffectantes pour la poignée du chariot, pour exemple. Il faut laver les fruits et les légumes à, en revenant chez vous et utiliser du savon et de l'eau. Et laver les mains tout de suite en utilisant du gel euh, dès votre retour à la maison. Restez chez vous autant que possible. C'est ce que je vais vous retenir à chaque jour et je, je sais que je le répète. Euh, COVID-19 affecte tout le monde et personne n'est à l'abri. On doit travailler ensemble pour aplatir la courbe. Et on a tout un rôle important à jouer ensemble. Merci. Good afternoon. Uh, these are certainly difficult times and new territory for everyone. The healthcare system is responding with great effort uh, to have the capacity and staff resources needed to best respond to this pandemic. We're planning for a surge in COVID-19 patients and our staff and physicians have been energetically working and showing great flexibility as the landscape changes daily with our numbers. There are issues that we know will continue to be a pressure and personal protective equipment is a concern. Our team is making great strides in sourcing personal protective equipment from vendors locally and around the world. And at the same time, we know that this equipment is in demand across the world. It is and will remain vitally important to maintain and conserve our supply of personal protective equipment. We have the supplies to meet our immediate need but using the equipment in the right situation and planning ways to conserve this equipment at every level is a necessity. And we're asking all our staff to take this seriously. The cough and fever clinics at the drive and the drive-through testing clinics are now both up and running in Charlottetown and Summerside. Appointments to the cough and fever clinics are through referral from your family doctor, nurse practitioner, or through 811 for those of you who can't access a family physician. When arriving at the clinics, I just want to reiterate a little bit of what I explained yesterday. Um, individuals are asked to remain in their vehicles until they're notified by the staff at the site, uh, and that's to ensure our proper infection prevention and control measures are taken as they're coming into their appointments at the assessment clinic. Patients who need testing for COVID-19 should continue to call 811 and be screened. Yesterday, 25 people were tested in Charlottetown and five in Summerside. And at the cough and fever clinic, we saw 14 people in Charlottetown and just a small number in Summerside as it only opened in the afternoon. We see media reports from other parts of the country and around the world uh, where long-term care homes are heavily impacted by COVID-19. Uh, we're doing everything we can to protect our residents here on Prince Edward Island. Most of our public facilities have individual rooms, but no matter what the living quarters, our staff are trained to look for early recognition of any respiratory illness and quickly isolate individuals at risk. Our long-term care staff are trained in the use of isolation and protective equipment, which they're using to keep the virus out of our residences. Anyone who lives in long -term, a long-term care home is closely monitored and will be a priority for testing if any symptoms are identified. Very early on here, under the direction of Dr. Morrison and her team, we closed our facilities to visitors and we have remained with these strict measures in place. These restrictions are difficult, but necessary. It is the time for us to work at containing the virus. I want to say thank you once again to all of our healthcare staff, volunteers and workers as we combat this virus together. 
We've had excellent support and collaboration from other government departments, employees, even beyond the Chief Public Health Office. Transportation and others have been really supportive. IT shared services in us as we've moved a lot of our services. And, uh, and everyone has been really helping in our response to this pandemic. So thank you. Open for questions. Nicole Williams, CPC. Hi. Uh, hi there. I, I'd like to ask about what you are expecting in the coming days and weeks in terms of the number of positive cases. We're obviously seeing now that, you know, the number of cases is on the rise and a lot quicker than we were seeing even just last week. What are you expecting in, the num in terms of the number of cases and when do you expect us to hit our peak? I think that's uh, the the biggest question uh, the whole country is facing. Um, certainly, I expect our numbers to continue to increase, and I think we will have a much better uh, picture in uh, within the next two weeks. And as as you can see in some of the other provinces. Um, those numbers are also uh, increasing and and really we're looking at different models and, and I think that's where your question is and uh, and they're exploring models right across the country and PEI is as well trying to get a, a sense of not only when we'll see a peak but uh, the different op or different um, I guess options of, of if we do everything right now, how will that impact those numbers in the, in the weeks ahead? So I, I do think uh, within a couple of weeks, we'll have a much better sense of um, those numbers and how they'll be uh, increasing in PI. And so that's why it's really important that no one uh, becomes complacent uh, with the preparation in our healthcare system and our public health measures that are put in place. Thank you so much. And I know you mentioned that at this point all of our cases are travel related, um, but how do we know there's no community transmission yet if we only recently started testing non-travelers? Well, we've been testing a lot of international travelers as well who are part of our community. And so we have um, well over 600 tests back that uh, um, they are part of our community and uh, they are negative. So that's certainly part of the picture. Um, as well, uh, even before the cough and fever clinics opened, um, we were testing uh, really sick people who were coming into hospital regardless of, of illness. Um, so anyone who might have been having severe acute respiratory illness, regardless of travel. So that uh, would have been some uh, indication as well in the, in the community. And uh, so we just want to continue to expand that uh, and try to get even more people uh, identified early. And, um, and so in many ways, we're following some of the trends uh, in the other provinces um, Initially, all travel-related, and then um, and then the community transmission um, uh, starts to uh, creep in. And uh, so, I, I'm, I'm, we're looking for it. We expect it, um, but uh, at this point, um, certainly, we've done a lot of tests within the last uh, week, even um, that are negative um, for people who are living here in Prince Edward Island. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Brittany Spencer, CBC. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is for Marion Dowling, uh, and it has to do with supplies. The province is running a request for supplies for COVID-19. Could you just explain to me how that's working, um, sort of what you're looking for? Are you looking for community donations to purchase equipment, or is it a combination of both? Uh, hi. Um, I think we're trying to have a coordinated approach to what supplies might be out there. Over the last number of weeks, we've had uh, several groups or individuals um, contact us to say they had potential access to supplies or some supplies um, available to them. And then there is a process to make sure that those supplies, if they're masks, for example, do comply with our standards for healthcare workers. So this is really an effort to try and coordinate some of that and have a, a, 
a central access point for people to look at that and identify if there are supplies that we can use. And in the meantime, we've uh, certainly been accessing any of those other avenues that have for individuals that have come forward or groups to see if we could um, get supplies through through those contacts. Okay, and a follow-up question to that uh, would be, you mentioned the importance of having to conserve the supply that you do have, um, and, you know, with this request out there for more supplies moving forward, um, does this mean there aren't currently currently enough for what you're expecting as, as uh, the number of cases rise, um, and how what are, the, what are some things the hospital is doing differently to try and conserve the supplies you do have? Um, okay, good question. I think there's a number of things there. One piece is we, we don't really know and we really want to uh, encourage everyone to comply with the orders through the Chief Public Health Office to stay home and physical distance, social distance, and help us not have in increased cases or any community spread. But we're, of course, planning for um, what may come based on what's happened in other jurisdictions. We do currently have supplies in place, but as I've been mentioning over the last number of weeks, we've been placed on allocation because of the demand across the country and the world for these supplies from our vendors and our suppliers. So we may only be receiving a portion of our regular orders um, as other places are in need. So we've been looking at various options. Um, and one of the tacks we have taken is looking at just the drive through clinic option. And that's a way to conserve this equipment because when people come in and through, we don't have to have our staff change all their personal protective equipment every time for every patient. So they can use the same equipment for multiple patients when they're doing it in that safe way. So there's been a number of things like that, looking at um, our past practices for other infection prevention and control measures. Um, even reducing to essential services helps us conserve our supply when we're not running the same number of operating rooms and the same number of cases. And along with that, those, those decisions are, are difficult and challenging for the providers who know people have been waiting for some of those services. So there's really a multitude of things that have been happening around how we're planning to conserve those supplies. Um, and we do need everybody's support across the health system to make sure they're being used appropriately. We've followed the guidance of the Public Health Agency of Canada, who I know is following the World Health Organization's guidance on the appropriate use of personal protective equipment, and that's what we want to be able to provide for our staff. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Do me be the guardian. Hi, good afternoon to you both. A um, uh, question for Ms. Dowling. Um, you, you've explained, I guess, uh, yesterday about the three sources for purchasing uh, ventilators for the province the uh, National Emergency Strategic Stockpile, the federal bulk purchasing, and, and I guess a provincial order. Uh, which of these three orders do you expect to arrive first, and what's the time, the expected timeline on that? Okay, hi. Um, yeah, I, what we're expecting to arrive first is the some of the ventilators through the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile. And we are anticipating they'll be here uh, within the next week or so in the province. Second to that is probably the uh, local order that we've done through our vendor, but I can't really say if that will come before or after the federal purchasing because there's lots of work happening around that federal purchase um, and we haven't gotten a confirmed date of when those would be delivered. So I, I'm unsure as to which one of those would happen first, but we're anticipating our local order, which was for the 12, uh, to come uh, the late spring, so within the next month or so, um, but we haven't got the confirmed date on the federal purchase. Okay, thank you. And, and just to follow up uh, uh, for Ms. Morrison, I wonder if you could give an update on uh, the establishment of a local uh, testing lab um, and when Islanders might uh, expect to see it up and running. So, uh, hello, Stu. So the um, local testing, so it's not a new lab, it's actually our provincial laboratory that uh, is 
going to be able to do start doing our, our testing here in Prince Edward Island for COVID-19. And we anticipate that being up and ready to go on Thursday for in a limited capacity. So really focusing on a quick turnaround uh, for uh, long-term care situations, certain critical health care workers, um, and because uh, they'll only be able to do so many, but they'll really help us, and especially on the weekends uh, where we've had to, um, you know, send uh, our samples off to Winnipeg uh, to the National Microbiology Lab. So the, the National Microbiology Lab will continue to support us um, even with our enhanced um, PI capacity, and then within the next one to two weeks, we'll have um, further equipment in for the provincial lab, um, which will hopefully mean we'll be able to do all of it uh, here. So uh, certainly um, it's uh, very promising and um, um, we're, we're very pleased that that's uh, happening uh, so, uh, so quickly. Thank you. You're welcome. Sean McDougall, Eastern Graphic. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this question is for Dr. Morrison. Um, yesterday, the Prime Minister said that uh, the armed forces have been preparing over the past couple of weeks to help communities in any capacity uh, across the country. So I'm just wondering, is anyone in the Chief Public Health Office or the province discussing using the armed forces in some way? We have not spoken with the armed forces in terms of, uh, from my, certainly I haven't spoken to the armed forces uh, in terms of response at, at this point in time. Uh, I am aware that they are always uh, and, and have been, as you indicate, preparing to help out uh, where they may be needed and may, where they may need to respond. And, uh, and I think uh, that would be something also that we would, uh, if we needed to, would be discussed at um, certainly with the Premier and um, Emergency Measures Organization. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Carrie Wynn, Ocean 100. Good afternoon, ladies. Um, Heather, a couple of questions about um, the new cases. So we had seven yesterday, three more new cases today. Mm -hmm. They're all travel related. Do we have the details on um, their their flight and number mm -hmm. and which airports uh, they come into? And I know a lot of people are looking for a breakdown of where the new cases are uh, per county yes. on the island, but you know, do we have that or does it even really matter that people have that information? Well, I think the flight information, as soon as we get it, I know there was flight information updated, I believe, at the end of the day yesterday and uh, the three new cases. Um, uh, we just spoke to them this morning, so those details are, will be uh, available as soon as we can, and then they will be, we've made a decision not only to submit those nationally uh, through the public health agency, but to post them uh, ourselves. So we'll continue to do that. Uh, everyone, of course, coming into the country uh, regardless of any flight they were on, uh, needs to be self-isolating, and um, and so it's um, it's important that anyone on any flight coming in self-isolate. So we'll continue to do that. And in terms of the county, uh, certainly uh, happy to uh, provide that. Uh, I, I don't have it in front of me, Carolyn, but uh, we can do that. We're hoping also to be able to put. Um, working with our provincial epidemiologist to, to put a, a little summary, almost like we do for influenza summary on the on our website and have our own PI COVID uh, summary so that we could uh, have our own graph there with the cases and some of that breakdown. So we're just looking at um, finalizing those details, but uh, we can make the counties available um, afterwards to you if you'd like. And also with um, uh, your statement earlier that um, you're recommending, you know, to those uh, seasonal visitors that may have property here, consider consider delaying coming until uh, the cottage and then until the end of, of May. Um, we know that people are coming now, that they are at the cottages now probably earlier than ever. Mm -hmm. And many of them, of course, um, you know, looking to, to get out of those larger centers where, um, you know, there would be more cases and try to avoid it and isolate here. 
Um, but does the wording need to be stronger than that, Heather, as to consider yeah. delaying? And because mm -hmm. does it put um, a greater risk of bringing the virus in, and also uh, a much uh, bigger load on our healthcare system here when when uh, this is what's happening? Well, and Carrie, when I think uh, we, I tried to address this yesterday. So a couple of parts to your question. One, all our cases to date have been people who are islanders. Um, they are residents. And so um, I am equally concerned about our islanders not uh, following self-isolation upon the return as I am about any any visitors. So it's, it's a both. Um, that it's a very important for anyone in PEI um, to uh, anyone coming to PEI to self-isolate. Um, and we need to know where our cases uh, and our cases to date have not been in anyone uh, coming to Prince Edward Island um, from who aren't uh, aren't residents uh, here in that sense. So uh, the other thing that's happened, and I know we've talked about it yesterday and the last couple of days, we are taking a lot more detailed information at the um, at our points of entry about not only why they're here, if they have to be here, and, uh, um, but, and where they're going to stay, but do they have supports to self-isolate? And I think that's really key. Um, and we're hoping that we can provide um, some further breakdown of uh, details of how many people actually are coming um, that uh, do not need to be here because certainly uh, by far the majority of uh, our islanders that are coming across the bridge are because they're returning from medical appointments uh, that they've had to have off island. Um, they are they live here and are needing to come home. Uh, they're essential uh, service workers, uh, healthcare workers, for instance, that may live somewhere else and they're coming across. So um, we may need to uh, change that language, Carrie Wynn, but uh, it is consistent. Other places have also asked their cottagers uh, to uh, not go to their cottages, wherever that may be in their other provinces, and we're asking the same here uh, to delay uh, that. Thanks, Heather. Great, thank you. Oui, bonjour, Dr. Morrison. Euh, il y a quelques jours, euh, le ministre euh, enfin, Affaires mondiales Canada a signalé qu'il y avait des milliers de Canadiens qui sont en ce moment encore bloqués à l'étranger. Euh, tous nos cas à Lille sont des gens qui reviennent de voyage. Est-ce que le gouvernement fédéral vous a donné le nombre d'insulaires euh, qui sont actuellement à l'étranger et qui cherchent à revenir Non, euh, je n'ai pas un nombre du gouvernement fédéral. And I'll just to repeat the question in French um, that uh, I was asked if I know the number of islanders who are still outside the country who are trying to get home. Et juste, enfin, est-ce que c'est une information qui serait susceptible de vous aider pour euh, euh, justement aplatir la courbe et veiller à ce que euh, le nombre de cas à Lille n'augmente pas de manière exponentielle? Uh, J'ai compris la, la dernière partie. Est-ce que vous pouvez répéter la, la, la question? Oui. Est-ce que c'est une information qui vous serait utile pour aplatir la courbe et euh, éviter que l'épidémie ne se propage trop vite à l'île du Prince-Édouard? Je ne pense pas que le nombre d'insulaires qui sont hors du pays à un moment va tellement changer. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait ici? On, on vient d'avoir la, la, la majorité des insulaires qui viennent de retourner et qui viennent à d'autres provinces. Alors, c'est tellement important qu'ils fait s'auto-isoler um, et uh, s'auto-isolement, uh, c'est sûr, um, mais le nombre d'insulaires qui sont encore hors du, uh, hors du pays, uh, uh, on va les, les voir quand ils retournent et uh, vraiment um, renforcer uh, l'importance de s'auto-isoler quand ils reviennent. Merci. Merci. Julien Lecacheur, Radio-Canada. Bonjour. 
Oui, bonjour docteur Morrison. Euh, je voudrais vous poser une question concernant le pont de la Confédération et les contrôles qui sont effectués sur place. Euh, pour y avoir été ce matin, au début, il y avait beaucoup de, de véhicules qui tentaient de rentrer. Aujourd'hui, le trafic des voitures est proche de zéro. Euh, Pouvez-vous nous parler de, de ces contrôles aujourd'hui avec la sécurité routière Quelles sont les questions exactes qui sont posées Et si jamais une personne ne répond pas euh, aux critères, vous le renvoyez automatiquement au Nouveau-Brunswick euh, alors oui, je, je suis d'accord. J'entends aussi euh, qu'il y a moins de euh, moins de voitures qui euh, à, vient sur le pont. Euh, mais les questions et demandes sont à propos, euh, en premier, du santé. Euh, Est-ce que vous euh, avez une fièvre? Est-ce que vous toussez? Euh, Est-ce que vous sentez bien? Euh, et euh, en premier, mais c'est aussi le nom, le numéro de contact, le, euh, euh, les questions... Euh, c'est quoi la raison de votre visite? Vous venez uh, d'une autre province ou hors du pays? Uh, uh, ils demandent uh, uh, où vous restez ici, si vous allez chez vous ou um, et si vous ne restez pas chez vous, c'est où? Et uh, c'est qui le, c'est quoi le nom du contact qui vont uh, t'aider à s'auto-isoler? Parce que vous ne pouvez pas aller pour chercher uh, uh, n'importe quoi. Alors, il faut aller directement là, mais il faut avoir les supports pour vous aider. Alors, c'est des questions uh, comme ça. Euh, et euh, il fait même sorte de choses euh, à l'aéroport. Les mêmes questions. Euh, et ils ont euh, les, les gens qui nous aident euh, du, avec le Highway Safety euh, qui sont là. Et, euh, et à ce moment, la Vraiment, les gens qu'on voit euh, entrer à l'île sont les, les gens qu qui doivent rentrer. Euh, on, on a toutes sortes d'exemples euh, qui, peut-être, ils doivent, sont, euh, il y a un, euh, un animal qui doit aller au collège vétérinaire pour une euh, chirurgie qui est essentielle. Alors, il vient... Euh, il y a un cas où quelqu'un a, a dû euh, venir pour chercher euh, sa femme. Alors, c'est vraiment des choses euh, qu'il doit, euh, pour une bonne raison pour venir. Il y en a euh, quelques, un, un très un nombre petit que qu'on qu a dit que c'est pas, euh, euh, je pense pas que c'est une bonne raison pour visite, et puis ils ont tourné, et puis ils ont parti. Ah, docteur Morrison, pour faire un follow-up sur cette question, j'ai pu m'entretenir avec des insulaires qui sont encore au Québec et qui hésitent à rentrer à l'île du Prince-Édouard parce qu'ils ont peur d'être arrêtés à la frontière du Nouveau-Brunswick ou, ou au pont de la Confédération. Qu'est-ce que vous avez à dire à ces insulaires qui sont encore au Québec et qui doivent rentrer à l'île du Prince-Édouard? Est-ce que vous pouvez juste les rassurer, leur dire « oui, bien sûr, vous pouvez rentrer chez vous um, ». Est-ce qu'ils habitent ici? Oui, ils sont résidents de l'île du Prince-Édouard. Uh, S'ils sont résidents de euh, l'île du Prince-Édouard, ils peuvent euh, retourner pour, euh, à, à leur résidence ici, s'ils sont en résidence. Donc, il n'y a pas de souci pour eux? Non, si, si vous habitez, euh, si vous, euh, vous habitez ici, travaillez ici, euh, euh, votre famille est ici, est, vous êtes, euh, c est, c est, euh, on, on habite ici et puis vous pouvez rentrer. Merci. Okay. François-Pierre Dufault, Radio-Canada. Bonjour. Bonjour, Dr. Morrison. Euh, on a vu aujourd'hui une première arrestation avec une amende à, à un insulaire qui euh, n'a pas respecté les règles d'isolement. Quand vous voyez ce genre de comportement-là, surtout que cet individu-là ici, il a été averti deux fois avant euh, qu'on lui émette euh, une amende de 1000 quand vous voyez ce genre de comportement-là, 
euh, avec toute la prévention et tout, euh, tous les conseils et les directives que vous donnez depuis plus d'une semaine, comment vous réagissez? Euh, je pense que je suis un peu déçue. Euh, Ce pas un peu, je suis déçue euh, que quelqu'un ne respecte pas euh, euh, la direction et, et ça, ça me dit qu'il n'a euh, ne, ne pense pas à quelqu'un d'autre et il peut peut-être infecter les autres et, et puis euh, um, j'ai beaucoup de questions euh, à bord de ça parce que je pense que la plupart des gens, je sais la majorité des gens veulent euh, s'occuper d'eux et, et ils ne veulent pas être malades mais ils ne veulent pas que les personnes autour d'eux euh, soient malades non plus. Alors euh, je suis déçue et je ne comprends pas pas vraiment euh, pourquoi euh, il ne suit pas la direction. Um, I'll just, I, I, I'm not always good at remembering to translate uh, my answers, but the question was about how did I feel about someone who was given clear direction about self-isolating and uh, did not uh, follow the, the direction. And my answer is uh, I'm certainly uh, disappointed. Um, I have questions about why someone would um, put not only themselves at risk, but other people in our community. Um, and um, certainly uh, there's all sorts of uh, options out there to help people support uh, you if if you're in self-isolation, and uh, again, those are for returning travelers. Okay. Thank you very much.